see our level damage. So, oh, I can. <laughs> man, I'm on the edge of my seat right now. Like, oh wait, this could be a lot of damage right here. Oh, never mind. I <laughs> take it back. It's another cool. <laughs> wow. Vortex kick. Vortex kick. Parts and down. killing that part. Oh, wow. That's game. All right, everyone, and welcome back to WBEL Season 2. It is the last week of this season, and as usual, I'm with the Chise for the Blind Division. Hey there, Numera. So let's jump into the standings. We had Greatestness in first place with a 8-0 uh, record. After that, we got uh, myself with a 7-1 with uh, the extra points, so at 8 points. And after that, uh, we got Kaysan and Machen with 6 and 5 points. Those two are going to clash this week. So um, we're going to see uh, who is going to fight with who for the in the uh, first uh, round of the playoffs. After that, we got Sushi, who's going to play with RNG with 5 points. And then we got Chize, who's going to play against Greatestness. So we'll see if you were able to break uh, that uh, perfect record. And finally, out of the playoffs, we got RNG, Mao, both with 3 points and Mogman and Irish Melt with two points. We have a scenario where Mao can make the playoffs if both Chize and Mogman loses, if he wins of course, and we have also a Mogman that can make the playoff if uh, Chize loses. Yeah, it's going to be an exciting week. Uh, I don't know if you have anything to add, uh, Chize. Like what you said, it sounds like my fate's kind of in my own hands. I have to beat the undefeated champion in order to uh, keep my playoff spot, so it's an exciting week for me. <laughs> All right, let's check that out. All right, so first match, we got Eresh Melt against Mogman. Uh, on Mogman's side, we have his A1 team. On Eresh Melt's side, we have Violet to, to uh, complete his uh, roster for extra points. So on this side, we get uh, Fang, Violet, and Vadim. On Mogman's side, we got All Day, Surges, and Ramada. So what can we expect? Uh, yeah, like you said, Mogman's A1 team going to come out and deal tons of damage and be the superstar that it always is. Uh, the Irish Melt side, I'm not seeing exactly how the Violet fits in. I know she's there for the extra point, but in terms of uh, building a team around her, I'm not really seeing it there unless, because I know Vadim can also be evasive, so I don't know if he went through the extra step to add some evasion cards to make the Violet also evasive. Uh, but my guess here is that it's just going to be the Lightning synergy with Fang and just have Fang be the carry and Violet's just kind of there. I hope I'm wrong. I hope I get to see Violet do some work because I love her as a unit. I wish that there was the Persona 5 rerun. Gumi, please. But uh, I'm not expecting a whole lot from this Violet here, but I am expecting a lot from the Fang as we've seen from previous matches. She's really put in a ton of work. Uh, I underestimated her from the beginning of this season, so uh, I'm expecting to see her do some massive damage. So that being said, it's, it's, in my mind, it's the Fang versus the entire A1 team of Mogman. So uh, I, even though the elemental disadvantage is over on Mogman's side, I do like his team comp because you have the full spear synergy here. Uh, we should be able to see the first bit of damage coming out here. And we'll see if she can do much. <laughs> <laughs> Not very much. Not a lot. The thing with water is that if there's an element that's really good against this counter element, it's water. It's uh, really surprising how <laughs> well we got uh, an attack from Ramada, uh, about a 7k on that Violet. So I'm, I'm still surprised that she uh, lived through it, <laughs> honestly. <laughs> All right, next we got Surges, so he's going probably to finish enough, uh, finish up that <laughs> Violet, I guess. I think it was his guaranteed hit, 6k. Next we got the uh, Fang, she got 140 AP, Blitz 2. Uh, not much on that Surges, honestly. That's pretty well tank, uh, about uh, 5k. Next, we got Aldi. Is he in range to hit them both? Let's see, he's going forward. Lines drain, not a ton of those two units, but there are uh, lightning units, so that uh, wasn't too surprising. And we got Confusion <laughs> Blade, so now the Surges is confused. Oh no, that's, that may be big. All right, so next we got Ramada, so going forward, that's per drive. Oh, so 4k on that Fang, that's a lot of damage and removing all buffs. Next, we got Sergio, that is confused and he's going to hit that all day from the back. Next, we got Fang, but they are all pretty much grouped up. So another Blitz too, and not a lot of damage on that Ramada. She's really bulky. And unfortunately for Irish Melt, all day was out of uh, that attack. 
next we get the OD, probably be able to kill them both right there, cleansing spear, and I think only living through our courage. Next we get a Ramada, and probably able to finish off that thing. Uh, pretty impressive win coming from uh, Mugman despite the elemental disadvantage. Yeah, I agree. I think that the Violet, once again, was just kind of there for the extra point. Unfortunately, she wasn't able to do a whole lot of damage, and she also didn't seem to be too evasive. I, You did call it correctly that the Sergius did use his guaranteed hit when he attacked, but when the Ramada attacked, I think he was just a regular Nighthawk. Yeah. So I don't know if Mogman had the accuracy or if the Violet just was not evasive, and I'm putting my money that the Violet just wasn't evasive. I think she was just kind of thrown in there. But that being said, it's not obviously not the best team that Erish Melt could have fielded, but I know that he was really going for that extra point. And Fang still was able to do some damage, but I think, once again, that Mogman was probably expecting the Fang, given that Erish Melt's Fang's done very well this season. So they probably built a, quite a bit of Pierce resistance, uh, would be my, my guess, because that damage, despite the elemental advantage, was actually surprisingly low, even against the... Uh, the Ramada, which I was expecting it to do the most damage on. I think Mogman's team was built with Pierce Resistance in mind and was able to still put out quite a bit of damage as well over on Erish Melt's team. Yeah, it's not too dumb. I mean, he's looking at Erish Melt's team and get, like, he got Fang. So <laughs> he's the, yeah. the biggest threat. I mean, his roster is mo mostly composed of uh, water units. So of course, on Erish Melt's side, he's going to bring Fang. He only had to like neuter this uh, lightning resistance and then uh, spear, and then you're good to go. That's what's really great with the whole day. It's really great uh, against uh, lightning uh, units. Yeah, and one last thing I will mention is, just like you said, with Mogman's team being mostly water, Erish Melt's team is mostly evasion. So <laughs> I, I said that Violet might not have been very evasive, but it could be the case that Mogman definitely just went very accurate, given that a lot of Erish Melt's units could be evasive. The Violet could have been evasive, but the Ramada could have just had enough accuracy to be able to hit her, even with just the Nighthawk. So uh, well prepared on Mogman's side, and uh, yeah, GG's to him. I don't think that the Violet was built to be evasive though because uh, you have to put the focus on, on Fang and uh, the synergy isn't really there but uh, yeah. So uh, GG to both players and uh, congratulations to Magman. Yep, GG to both players. Alright, so next match we got Kaysan against Machen. A uh, funny thing on Kaysan's side, it is his uh, ninth different team that he brought uh, this season. So he haven't used a similar team for all season. He was uh, pretty proud of it when he mentioned it to me after the fight. And so we got Cloud Barrett and Arif against Machen's Halloween Rare You Zazan and Unkillable Zazan. So let's check that out. Two of my favorite themed teams going at each other with the two puffs and the all collab units team. So, uh, most even more notably on Case on side, his team is all Final Fantasy VII units, which makes me absolutely happy. To the point where I'm not even calling out the buffs, I'm just gushing over the teams. So, <laughs> we have the two Zazons over on Mation side, and we have the all Final Fantasy VII units over on Case on side. Both sides getting off an early haste. And the Barret, a ranged unit, but is a bit of a tank. So he's getting out ahead, and hopefully he's able to tank up some of this damage from Mation. Because looking over at Mation's side, his two DPS, oh, some damage off right away. <laughs> I was like, I didn't expect the Zazan to be right away. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> I was just gonna say that the two DPS are, are Earth versus the Cloud, but. The fight's already underway, jeez. <laughs> and we got a Drain Invocation that's been cast by Ryu. Pretty well tanked by, the, by that Barret, uh, about a 3k HP. Next we got Cloud, Barrage, so <laughs> wow, cap damage on that Zazan. Next we got Arif, so probably healing that Barret. So she's using the LB already. Uh, I think that it also um, buffs the attack. No, it's the death, alright. Next, we got the Alwyn Rare U. He's in range for the LB. Most probably, if it, it's the Aerith, it could be very troubles. All right, so only Cloud and Barret. So I don't remember what does Poison and oh. Death Pursing Res down. Oh, uh, so Barret uh, will do a hit, but he's going to die right after it. <laughs> Which is uh, a shame because he did have his courage online. Oh, but re race helps. He <laughs> re race from Arif, yeah, true. <laughs> Next, we got the uh, Halloween, uh, not Halloween, uh, Unkillable Zazan. 
He looks like a Halloween character, though. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> so he's going to have a guaranteed hit nullify, killing that cloud. Uh, now, right, so next we got Aria. She doesn't have full, uh, full re-raise, unfortunately, but she's going to heal that uh, Barret. Next we got uh, Raryu again. Is in range. Hazard Disruption. About oh. 7k on that Aerith. She had really not a lot of HP. Next we got Barret. Point blank. And oh, only 3k on that Alloween uh, Rare you. Next we got Halloween uh, again. Unkillable <laughs> Zazan. <laughs> I'm sorry, folks. And is LB again. Oh, damn. I think it's because of the reach. And not able to kill that Aerith. She... Uh, Tank pretty well that slash damage. Next we got Halloween Ryu. Was what is he going to do? As our disruption again. Oh my God! Uh, how many? W was it 10k? I think it was 7k for that hit, but still he he's standing I didn't in the courage. I didn't see <laughs> because of the fountain, so yeah, he, he was uh, up to coverage. Next we got Aerith, another ill Holy Prayer, only 5k though, and then we got Halloween Ryu again. 31 AP, stun I guess Saber, and this time enough to kill that Barif. And uh, Arif is not known to be a big DPS, so I think that uh, this is it. So a lot of damage coming from that Sazan, and next we get Arif next, probably going to heal herself to death. No, <laughs> she's oh. actually going <laughs> to attack and draining 20 AP from that uh, Alwyn Ryu. But next we get uh, uh, your Sazan again, and finishing off the Arif. Yeah, unfortunately, I don't think that uh, Kason had any chance against that top. Uh, it was pretty uh, tailor made to uh, beat him. Yeah, it was already unfortunate from the beginning with the double earth units going against the main DPS over on Kason's side, which is the Cloud, and the elemental disadvantage being on his side was already a hard barrier to overcome, but unfortunately, the Cloud didn't even get the chance to see how much damage he could deal. He did the barrage on the Zazan, which you know, took him out in one hit, cap damage, but wasn't able to see how much damage he was able to do against the two Earth units. Uh, there is a good chance, like I said, elemental disadvantage, be damned. You know, there is a good chance that Cloud could still have done some serious damage to them. Uh, unfortunately, we didn't get a chance to see it. And I, I would imagine that there is at least a little bit of lightning resistance on uh, Mation's side as well. So I don't believe that he would have been able to deal some, but it's a shame that we never got to see it in the first place. And so once he went down, uh, you know, Barrett obviously didn't have the damage and Aerith was stuck in healing mode. So uh, yeah, once Cloud went down, it was it was pretty much sealed from that point on. Yeah, there wasn't enough damage on Kason's side and Machen's side was really well prepped because uh, the bulk was there. Uh, I, I don't think that this team dealt more than uh, 4k. Yeah, I don't think so. Yeah, it was very well tanked. All right, so not much else to say. Uh, GG to both players and uh, congratulations to uh, Machen. Yep, GG to both players. All right, so next match, we got Greatestness against Cheese. So on Greatestness side, we got a double great sword and Devout. So we got uh, Oldoa, Amnelis, and Oran. On Cheese side, we got Lilith, Lucio, and Tyrell. Cheese, what was your train of thought? Yeah, so uh, going as Greatestness here, I had to bring my all against the undefeated champion. So bringing out one of my best teams. I was hoping for, I was thinking he would do the same and bring the A2 with the old Doa, because I knew the old Doa was the last unit he needed to bring for the extra points. So I was expecting the A2 old Doa team. What he did bring though, I did not expect at all. So I was very scared seeing this team come out because I, I went hard on the ice resistance. I went hard on just a bunch of like, healing power down, things that would disrupt the A2, but not necessarily things that would help me against the Amnelis. So you can even see from my buff there, I have the Ice and Wind because I was expecting the A2 Oldoa. So uh, I'm a little afraid about how this match is going to go underway, especially since he has the Amulus against my Lilith and has the Elemental Adventures there, which I think it was a smart bring because my roster is all just light, earth, and fire. So bringing the Amulus, there's really no threat against that. And given that I probably was expecting the A2, bringing fire against that and then having the Amulus against my fire is pretty a pretty smart move. And with the hasted up Amnelis, I'm even more scared. I will say, uh, a little disrespecting the Auron and the uh, Oldoa, I'm not too <laughs> afraid of them, especially with my Tyrell doing 5,000 there. 
Ashen King Tyrell. <laughs> <laughs> so Ashen King Tyrell did a lot of that around, but because of Amnesty, he had a hell back. Next, we got uh, also another 6k uh, coming from the fire unit on the ice unit, though. We got Amnelis doing uh, not so much on Tyrell. Uh, oh, wow. <laughs> and next, we got Lucio nearly clinging out, but he uh, didn't add the reach on that Oldoa. So next, we got uh, Oldoa, so finishing off that Tyrell. The 8 was good for him. Next, we got Amnelis, but now she's in range to hit them all. Let's see the level of damage. So, Annulment at about 8k on that Lilif and removing all the buffs. Next, we got uh, Lucio. So dual glint <laughs> and again it's so damn strong but uh, since she held back Amnelis uh, she still had her uh, courage it reprocs when her HP goes above uh, 70% next we got uh, Oldoa's LB watch it because you won't see it ever again <laughs> 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 and killing that Lilith next we got the Amnelis so Annulment against uh, not even 3k on that <laughs> On that Lucio and he back with his uh, counter. Next we got Lucio again. <laughs> and killing them both. Yep. You were ready for greatestness. Yep. Uh, I was, like I said, I was ready for the A2. Uh, really scared against this team. I do think just the fact that he had to bring Oldoa to secure that first place slot definitely held him back quite a bit. There was definitely better teams that he could have brought than this one against against me. <laughs> uh, so I got lucky that he was kind of forced to bring Oldoa, but hey, a win is a win. I'll take what I can get. <laughs> I'm glad uh, Lucio kind of did what I was hoping that he would do. And uh, the, even though he did approach my side of the map quicker than I thought he would, so I didn't actually get off all the buffs I was planning on. Even despite that, it still ended up really well in my favor. So uh, glad to at least have taken home that win. I really think that the key of the match was the bulk on that uh, Lucio. I mean, Greatestness could have had like four more turns and I don't think that he would have been able to go through your Lucio, so... <laughs> <laughs> it, it felt so unfair because he was receiving like 2k hits and then doing uh, cap damage every time. I'm really um, happy to, uh, not to face you in the first uh, round of the playoffs. I must just say that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, the bulk on the Lucio was definitely my key to victory there. And also the fact that I, I don't know exactly what was going on with the targeting or it probably had to do something with the unit res aoe res but instead of doing aoe's on my lucio and yeah. tyrell and all that stuff they were just single targeting my lilith i didn't build her with any hate so it must have just been uh, my elemental resistance and stuff on the lucio that was kind of dissuading them from doing multi-attacks so uh, he was able to kind of just stay safe the whole fight until the very end so it was pretty advantageous for myself <laughs> All right, GG to both players, and uh, congratulations, uh, Chizé, for doing uh, McRain on uh, Greatness. <laughs> Thank you, and GG to Greatness. All right, last match for today, we got Mao against myself. Unfortunately, Mao and me were supposed to do a live reaction match, but that day he had trouble with his internet connection, so he had to play on his uh, mobile data, so unfortunately uh, Discord was out of the portrait. We had to do it uh, regularly. It's a shame because uh, you guys will miss uh, another uh, French interview, <laughs> because <laughs> Mao is also uh, a friend of mine that is living even in the same city as me. Well, near. So <laughs> we got uh, Mao's uh, Whisper, Ice Olet, and Murmur against Mia, Rain, and and Astrius. So uh, let's check that out. What is it? What can we expect? All right, getting into the match. So one thing that's immediately apparent that I'm a little worried about for Mao is having an ice magic DPS versus the rain, who has the elemental advantage and is good at tanking magic. So, uh, and of course, not only that, he's also good at tanking AOE hits, which Hallet has quite a bit of. So that's the main thing. Uh, well, I will say with the positioning, if the rain doesn't get ahead fast enough, there is the chance that the Ice Hallet could reach there, but I mean, Astrius is also hidden behind the wall, so it's going to take a while for him to reach the center. I do think that the rain is going to be the first one to engage, uh, but the rain also might be preoccupied with the Whisperer off on the side because it looks like they're about to meet head to head. <laughs> uh, so we have the Whisper, or sorry, the, uh, the Murmur going and hasting up the Hallet, and I will haste up herself after that. Uh, but once again, Astrius is just kind of over in the corner, able to get off all the buffs he's going to need. He'll probably be able to have at least one more turn of getting buffs online before engaging here. Uh, same with Howlett, though, just getting off his counterpoise buff, so he has the 
uh, the preemptive attack. And uh, Rain, though, still just so far into the back. <laughs> <laughs> oh, but the charm yes. goes on. <laughs> Oh, that's gonna be really. Oh, that's really troublesome. I asked because, him after the match, and he had the stones. <laughs> oh, that's rough. That's really rough because now the tank is all grouped up again with the DPS, and once again, uh, the asterisk is so far away that he's not gonna be able to get in range to be able to knock out the charm. He's just gonna get another buff online. <laughs> so the <laughs> LB is off of the portrait, and that's really good because he it's like a truck. And uh, fortunately for Mamiya, uh, I had the uh, re-raise on her. So Astrius only moving forward, doesn't have uh, the range. <laughs> and now we have an Aced Charm Whisper. The uh, rain is really far, far, far away. He won't be joining back soon, unfortunately. Uh, so yeah, we got Astrius going forward. The thing is that I didn't mock against this that team because in my head it wasn't any threat. And uh, you see that I really uh, deeply regret that top. Heavenly Diffusion and <laughs> doing a ton on that uh, Astrius. So next we got Whisper, she's going to uh, do some harm to his own team. Uh, I, I don't remember, I think it was all... No, okay, she, she went for the murmur, so doing uh, agility down. It could be <laughs> bad in the long game, but yeah, fortunately for him, the counter helped to remove that. And uh, that was kind of odd, Rain went for the... Uh, for the outlet instead of the Mao, but he was really prepared for the rain because uh, rain really didn't do a lot of damage on, on him. Next, we got Murmur. She's still she's stuck in the back. I don't re even remember what she did. Next, <laughs> we got the Astrius. So going forward, rending the distribution. Not a lot of damage on both, and we got a counter of Tricky on my Astrius. So next, we got the Whisper, Regen. Basic attack on rain, so now she has 23 AP. Next, we got Owlet, so the moment of truth for him. Is he going to uh, go for my Estrus? No, uh, rain still had some 8. In the end, it uh, went great for me. Next, we got uh, rain with 100 AP. He has uh, a lot. Soul prominence, not a lot on that Whisper, but uh, enough to uh, build a, up a nice chain. <laughs> Next, we got Murmur, and she's going to aim for my Estrus with Flare. <laughs> And <laughs> oh. yeah, only uh, 1400 HP, so not a lot. Uh, all right, so quadra break, so not a lot of my rain. Next, we get Astrius. At this moment, I'm concerned to who is going to aim. So really He's thinking hard right about it. Yep, yep, yeah. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> He's got a lot of options here. Rendering distribution again and killing that all. At that moment, I was uh, pretty uh, safe. Yeah, given that the murmur only did 1400, I. <laughs> <yeah>. <laughs> I'd say I like your odds. <laughs> yeah, and Rain with the region uh, is still an early uh, full elf, so. Defense Destroyer. We got Asterisk uh, going again. So, using DLB, it's going to uh, Rocket Poison. And follow up now. Oh, Not even goodness. able to kill that uh, Murmur. And next, we got Rain uh, region again, so uh, yeah, it's still 14k HP only. I think that that charm was pretty massive in the beginning just because the Whisper wasn't able to kind of do her job as a tank in the beginning and the rain taking a while to get into the fight there was the definite chance that the Asheus would have been the first one to engage and how it might have been able to uh, fight him before the rain even was able to draw the hate so I think that the charm helped out quite a bit in uh, helping his team stay back and so that the rain had time to move forward and take up some of the hate. Because yeah, once you once the rain got there, he was taking that damage incredibly well. To the point where, yeah, I don't think that there's really ever getting through that rain unless he somehow ran out of hate. But if he ran out of hate before Asterisk was able to kill the team, that would that would have been very strange, <laughs> I will say. Because the Asterisk was putting out some really good damage himself. I do think that the, without the charm, there might have been a, a chance. Uh, but, man, that charm really, really <laughs> was was very strong against uh, against uh, Mao's team there. I won't complain. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> All right, GG to Mao, and thank you for doing uh, this match with me. It was uh, really fun talking to you today. Yep. GG to both players, and uh, congrats to you, Nimura. Thank you. 
All right, so here's the final standings for the season for the blind division. Like we all expected, Greatestness is in first place. I have more kills than him, but uh, since he beat me to the head-to-head, -head, it's the first tiebreaker, so he's going to finish uh, with the first seat. After this, we got uh, myself with a 8-1 record also. We will both have the buy for the first round. And next week, uh, we won't have any opponent to a fight. And for the first round, we'll have Sushi with 7 points against Cheese that is uh, making the playoffs by an air. So <laughs> one point away from <laughs> Mugman. And after that, we got Machen that will face Kaysan next week. They both have 6 points, but Machen, since beat uh, Kaysan to the head to head, is going to go Ortsy. But it doesn't matter because they're facing each other so uh, yeah <laughs> <laughs> but although if Kaysen would have won it it would be him that would be facing uh, Chizé so that fight at least uh, this importance so yeah for Mugman unfortunately he needed Chizé to lose because he has won his uh, fight today but since uh, Chizé has won he has uh, one point above otherwise uh, Mugman would have went above uh, Chizé since uh, he has uh, won his match against him for Mao, fortunately for him, he needed absolutely uh, Cheesy to lose and Magman also to lose. So uh, yeah, he won't be able to go uh, into the playoff portrait. You'll notice that we didn't add the match between Sushi and Orange. Unfortunately, Orange is in vacation and he haven't sent any messages to Sushi, so I disqualified him for this week. Uh, so by default, I gave uh, Sushi a 3-0 win. Since she intended to use our last uh, unit for the extra point, I allowed her to have it, but uh, it's only fair at that point. Anyway, there wasn't any uh, buy and play or playoff implication. She, Sushi was already making the playoffs, so it's not a big deal at least. And unfortunately, uh, in the very uh, last place, we got uh, Erish Melt. Yeah, that's it for the portrait of the playoffs for the uh, Blind Division. I just want to tell everyone, you know, thank you for participating. You know, it was great getting to play against all of you guys. I'm also glad to see that uh, everyone was able to get their extra standings point, getting to see all the unique rosters. Like Nimro mentioned in the case on match, he used nine unique teams throughout the entire series. So there's been some really fun matches to shout cast. I'm excited to see more of it during, through the playoffs, but uh, really glad to at least have played with all you guys during this uh, initial round. Yeah, that's true. Uh, thank you everyone for part participating. It was really nice to have you there and it was really cool to see all your uh, creative teams. All right, so uh, this is it for the uh, Blind Division this week. We'll see you uh, next week for the uh, beginning of the playoffs. Thank you for watching, and uh, I hope that we're going to see you in the next video. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. All right, so next match we got Greatestness against Cheese. It's on Greatness. Greatness. <laughs> I hate his name. I know. <laughs> <laughs>